Hello and welcome to this follow-up of a CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. In the previous follow-up, we were working on the CiviWiki project, organizing a 2.0 milestone. The goal of the 2.0 milestone is to simplify CiviWiki and make it more relevant and welcoming to new com contributors and community members. The project's been dormant for a while, and we're trying to reboot it a little bit. And in the past few days, we've had contributions from four new community members that have been merged into the code base, and a few pending pull requests, which we'll review shortly. I've got these tabs open. As you can see, our contributor canvas, or contributor quilt, has grown over the years of CiviWiki's development. And it's really remarkable that so many people have come around the CiviWiki campfire to make it happen. So the specific changes from the 2.0 milestone, uh, this one focuses around privacy and making CiviWiki more generally useful. We've got a feature to look up people's elected representatives based on their location in the United States. And given that many users might not reside in the United States, this elected representative feature poses a barrier to CiviWiki's applicability in other nations or locations. And since we're removing this elected officials component, it also made sense to remove information about the actual location, including longitude and latitude, which could be sensitive information. And we don't really want to collect more information than is necessary to make CiviWiki useful. So both of these issues were closed by a single pull request written by T. Berm. This is a very substantial pull request. Almost 7,000 lines of code were removed, both Python and JavaScript code and HTML templates. So T-Berm uh, really went through the whole application end to end, removing the location data and representatives. 24 files were changed and 16 commits. They updated the, our data model, removing those fields, and then basically removed lines of code and entire files relating to this uh, location that were, it was interwoven through so many places of the app. Here's an entire file that was removed. This is a great pull request and uh, really impressive work by T. Berm. Another obstacle to development and potentially other types of contribution like design work or usability testing, um, it's our Docker file. Some of the dependencies in there were just out of date and we were using Python t uh, 2.7 most notably, which meant that we couldn't even install certain of our Python dependencies as they don't have Python 2 releases. Uh, Python 3 is the essentially um, where we should be focusing and targeting our, our development work. Python 2.7 has been deprecated and I think has really reached its end of life. I'm not sure if it's even maintained anymore. So Anthony opened up a pull request that updated our Python version and cleaned up some lines of code that were installing extra dependencies that were relating to automated testing, which might not be uh, necessary uh, at least for getting a development environment set up. We might move the automated testing parts to its own kind of environment and Docker file. So thank you, Anthony. That was a very useful um, contribution and it actually immediately help, has helped us get along the line or further down the line in a couple of these open pull requests I'll get to shortly. Another dependency that's actually I think outdated or deprecated is this Django environment. It's designed to make it really easy to get environment variables into your Django app, 
but I'm not sure that it's being maintained any longer. And in particular, one of our goals is to update to the latest Django LTS, which is 3.2. And it doesn't appear that Django environment or environ has support for Django LTS. In any case, uh, Python is batteries included programming language and it makes it easy to get environment variables out or into the application. So we have this pull request opened by Obafemi and removing 31 lines of code, changing 22. Mostly the lines that were removed were relating to importing and instantiating this environment. And then the lines that were changed are just using os.getinv with uh, generally sensible defaults or none for all of the places where we were using the Django environment, which is basically our settings.py. And then finally removing the dependency from our requirements. Thank you very much, Obafemi. That's really important work that you did. These environment variables are currently necessary to even start the application. So <laughs> that's definitely a barrier to entry. If it's been uh, partially removed, we're going to improve that a little bit further. And this is a interesting um, contribution. Essentially, our code uh, was uh, not really following any clear guidelines for formatting. And there's a Python package called Black that just is, gives you a set of guidelines and will automatically format your code um, for you. You can run a command line utility or integrate Black with your development uh, tool, like your IDE, and it will lint and format your code every time you save. So Harsha opened a pull request, and this is a really big one. They, it basically ran black on all of our files, including some of the migrations that were auto-generated and changed many, many lines of code. I won't go through these, but it's essentially the, most of the project, if not all of the project files, had some formatting issues. And even uh, we're still seeing PEP8 has a little bit of different, uh, different opinions than black. And that's just something we'll live with or resolve a little bit later. Thank you very much for that contribution, Harsha. And we'll be sure to use black on pull requests as they come in from other contributors going forward. These uh, remaining issues are open. This closed beta feature was put in place when CiviWiki was uh, considered as a kind of single singular instance application. In other words, there was only going to be one CiviWiki on one website in the world. We're trying to make CiviWiki more general purpose in including um, allowing people to install CiviWiki on their own servers. So this closed beta functionality doesn't, doesn't really make sense. In particular, um, CiviWiki is always going to be a work in progress, I believe. So we just uh, have an idea to remove it. And as you can see, I have gone through the code and uh, noted down the places where I've uh, where this closed beta has been interwoven through that, through the code base. And Jithin um, agreed to take the issue under development and has opened a pull request with a couple of hundred lines of code changed. And it looks like after some discussion and review, they were having issues uh, with our dip dependencies, which were relating to a Python 2.7 environment. And then we're unable to run migration commands due to the same reason, most likely. So now that we've um, improved the Docker file, I believe this pull request should be resolved very shortly. So I wanted to give um, mention of that work in progress. And finally, last but not least, Another substantial work is removing uh, legislative functionality. So getting lists of bills that representatives have voted for, that's the two sides of the coin of this elected representative functionality. This is another feature that is oriented towards the United States. And so it limits the relevance of CiviWiki to communities outside of the United States. In addition, it's integrating data from third party sources that are um, one of which is no longer 
active and another uh, of which um, I think we're halfway through porting the code over to supporting another source for information about bills. But the fundamental issue is that data integration is very complicated and it's been one of the greatest sources of difficulty in developing CiviWiki and maintaining it. I believe by removing it, we're gonna simplify so many things uh, and make our code and project much more relevant and get down to the basics, which is just people coming around and discussing, having constructive discussions about social issues that many of us are faced with on a daily basis and kind of reaching a, a consensus and finding root causes and ideas on how to fix that. I believe that's the value that CiviWiki brings into the world. So yes, this has been a really exciting morning, basically. I kind of looked at my GitHub notifications and, and saw that I had been, in some ways, um, oblivious to the fact that there were pull requests that had been opened even 14 days ago that I hadn't been checking, as well as a flurry of activity in the past few days. I'm gonna get better at checking CiviWiki, at least hopefully on a weekly basis, getting keeping the project going forward and perhaps getting it under active stewardship by other community members uh, by sending invitations to these contributors to join the CiviWiki community. But it's really exciting to see so many open source contributors coming together. And Code Buddies, I believe, is instrumental in the, um, build, the community building process. So I highly recommend that if you're not already involved on Code Buddies, to stop by codebuddies.org and join and, and participate in some of these hangouts or host your own hangout see what's going on in various uh, community groups. There's a lot of them, and I'm sure there's a community group for almost anything uh, um, that you'd be interested in, If particularly if you're oriented towards development, software development, and perhaps design, and uh, those other skills that encompass uh, open source development. I appreciate your time uh, in checking out this uh, recap, this uh, follow-up of a Code Buddies Hangout session. I hope you're doing well out there and have a great day.